In the previous lectures, we learned how to use Buttercup to do a number of cool things. But everything we did, we did it through a text or a terminal interface. There is also a web interface or a graphical interface for Buttercup that we can use to do everything that I showed you so far. The reason why I started with the text interface because first of all I actually prefer using it and I use that instead of the graphical interface all the time. I think it's faster, you can use it to achieve your goal and launch the attacks much faster. It also requires less resources and less modules. Therefore it's less likely to fail and it's less buggy. Not only that, but by learning how to use the text interface, I also showed you how to manually modify the caplets and the scripts, where they are stored, and how to use them properly without the need for an extra plugin, which is the plugin that runs the web interface. With that being said, some people still think the web interface is more user friendly, and that's why I'm gonna cover it in this lecture. So I'm gonna start better cap by typing better cap, and I'm gonna do dash I face to select my interface, which is ETH zero. And I'm not gonna specify a caplet this time because I simply just want to start better cap on the interface that is connected to the target network. So we're gonna hit enter and that will run with no issues as usual. Now, if you're using the custom Kali image that I made for this course, then you can simply start the web interface by typing HTTP dash UI. But if you're using the original version of Kali, or if you're using Buttercup on a different distribution, then you're gonna have to install the web interface. So you're gonna have to do ui.update to install it. And then once it's installed, you can simply do http-ui. Now, like I said, because I am using the latest custom Kali that is made for this course, I can simply run it by typing HTTP-UI without having to install anything. And if I hit enter, you'll see that it's going to run with no issues on this URL. So I'm going to copy this and we're going to go and open it in my web browser. And perfect, as you can see, we get the login page for the web interface. So the default username is user and the default password is pass. I'm gonna click on login to login. And as you can see, we have a very simple and easy to use interface. There is no more commands that we have to run, even though we can run commands here through the command line. Right here, we have the event log. So this is similar to what you see in here in the terminal, but it's in a much nicer interface. You can use the search bar here to filter if you're looking for a specific log or for a specific event. And you can actually click any event type to mute it. So you won't see any of that event on screen. All of this is happening in here in the events menu. The next useful page would be the LAN page right here, which will show you all the devices connected to the network. So this is similar to when we used to do net.show. As you can see right now, we only have the router, which is at 10.0.2.1, and my current computer, which is 10.0.2.15. This is Kali. Now, as you know before, we had to start the net.recon and net probe to discover all of the devices on the same network. So in here, instead of writing the commands, all you have to do is click on this play button to start the net.probe and click on this play button to start the net.recon. You'll get nice notifications in here. And as you can see, we managed to discover all of the connected devices. You can also see in here we have a nice tag to tell us that this is the gateway and a nice tag telling us that this is our computer. And the devices that we discovered are these two devices. And you can see this is my MS Edge device, the Windows machine that we have always been targeting. Again, because this is a very simple web interface, you won't have to type anything. You can click on this little arrow right here beside the machine, beside the IP. You can either scan this machine for ports or add it 
to your spoofing targets. So you won't have to set ARP spoof targets to this IP. All you have to do is literally click here and it's automatically added to the ARP spoof. Not only that, but we'll see a nice little window in here to configure our ARP spoofer. And remember, we used to set this option to true, the full duplex. So all I have to do now is just click here to check it. And to start the spoofer, all I have to do is click on start spoofing and done. Now we should be spoofing the target. As you can see, we also see a nice icon in here beside this IP to tell us that at the moment we are spoofing this IP, telling it that we are the gateway. So now if I go to my target and just do ARPA, you can see that the router's MAC address has changed to the MAC address of the Kali machine, which is this one. So that means that we are properly spoofing this device, telling it that we are the router and we managed to become the man in the middle. Now I've actually showed you how to do all of this before in details. So if you don't remember any of this or if any of this feels strange, then please go back and revise the lectures where I covered these things. Now I also showed you how to bypass HTTPS and partially bypass HSTS using a caplet. Again, we have a nice menu here for caplets. And as you can see, we have all of the caplets currently available with better cap. And all you have to do is just click on the caplet that you want to run. And in my case, it's the HSTS hijack caplet. Also, if you remember, when we were modifying this caplet, we used to have to open the location where the caplets are installed and then open the caplet in a text editor and then modify its options. Whereas in here, you can literally modify any options you want with this, within this menu. Click on the disk icon right here to save and then click on play to run this caplet. And as you can see, you get nice notifications telling you that everything got executed as expected. And right now we can go ahead and test this. So if I go here and just clear the browsing data as usual. And then if I just go to a normal HTTPS page, such as stackoverflow.com, you'll see that this will load over HTTP. So we can log in and we should be able to get the username and password as I showed you before. And we can test the partial HSTS bypass. So if I go to google.ie and search for Facebook, click on the first result. And perfect, as you can see, it's loading over normal HTTP here again. So if I log in, the information will be captured by my sniffer. So as you can see, it is very, very easy to edit caplets and even run them through this web interface. You can also run all of the other plugins through the advanced menu in here. So for example, if you wanted to start the sniffer, all you have to do is just scroll down here looking for the sniffer. And we have it right here, net.sniff. If I click on that, as you can see on top, it's telling us it's not running. And right here, instead of running the commands, all you have to do is just click on the command that you want to run. Not only that, but if you wanted to modify any of the options, again, all you have to do is just type whatever you want to modify in here, click on the save in here, and then run the command that you want to run. So if I wanted to start the sniffer now, all I have to do is just click on net.sniff on and this will start the sniffer for me. Now the sniffer combined with the nice events that we can get in here makes it easier to filter through the data that we capture, but it's still not the best way to filter through the captured data. I will cover how to properly sniff data and filter it using Wireshark, which is the best tool for sniffing and filtering data. But again, this web interface right here provides a nicer way of interacting and using better cap. Now, I didn't show you how to use the Wi-Fi, the BLE, the HID, and the Poison menus because we actually did not use any of these modules previously. So I just wanted to focus on showing you how to do everything we've done so far using this interface. 
like I said, it, it is easier to use, I agree, but once you get used to the terminal interface, it will be just as easy as this one. To me, it's more organized, it can be used to achieve my goals much quicker, it uses less resources, and it's faster. That's why I prefer using it over the web interface, and if it wasn't for showing you how to use the web interface, I wouldn't even install it. But at the end of the day, I wanted to show you both options, and obviously you're free to use whatever is easier for you.